Hey guys, how are you doing? Crypto Market here. And as you can see, we're here at the Decentral Conference in Berlin. And it has been a very interesting conference. I have learned a lot of new things, listened to a lot of new ideas. And it has been a very interesting week in cryptocurrency. So in this video, you see the hottest news of the cryptocurrency sphere. So if you enjoy the content, I'll leave it a thumbs up and comment down below with your Litecoin address to win some Litecoin. And thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Yeah, so I was recently at a very interesting event in Berlin at the Decentral Conference. So learned a lot of new stuff, met a lot of cool people. So I always try to mix the videos up and show you something else. But of course, today we're going to talk about Bitcoin. And the first, pro first part of this video will be focused around... Um, the development of the Bitcoin price in the last few days. As you can see, um, we went from 6,300 in a matter of a few hours to 6,500, which is crazy. And then the second part of this video will be only the news from the market. So I hope you enjoy the content. If you do, make sure to leave it a thumbs up and comment down below. And let's get into it. So as you can see, all of a sudden, Bitcoin goes down, right? That's nothing new to us. But however, the question is, what has caused this dump? As humans, it's completely normal and natural to want to know what the cause of different um, things is. And after doing a ton of research, I have found out that the initiation of the whole dump started at Cointelegraph with this article. Now, this article isn't Really spectacular. Arbor CEO SEC denies Bitcoin ETFs because applicants do not fit industry archetype. However, the keywords lie here. SEC denies Bitcoin ETFs. Now, since this was posted a few days ago, um, two days ago to be exact, it's kind of hard for me to um, recreate all the events hour per hour because now I only see September 5th and I don't see the... Uh, time when this was posted however i know um that this article was posted in the middle of the night in the us while people are sleeping so what is happening once coin telegraph such a powerhouse in crypto news posts an article that has sec denies bitcoin etfs in its title algorithms go crazy and dump their bitcoin and in in my research that i have done this was the first step in initiating a huge dump now, am I saying that Cointelegraph went short on Bitcoin and then made a profit off of that? No, I'm not, but that could be one scenario that we have seen. Furthermore, Goldman Sachs puts crypto trading desk on hold, focuses on developing a custodian crypto product. This was a link, uh, this was an article by Business Insider. Now, I'm going to make this uh, window smaller so you can see. The, look at the link down there, businessinsider.de. Goldman Sachs retreats and that's the link that was used for this article and then when you click the link you'll see that the article is offline. Why did this happen? Because the CEO of Goldman Sachs that the whole thing about recent reports about our crypto trading desk were fake news. The CEO clarified the report being false at the TechCrunch Disrupt conference in San Francisco. He said, I never thought I would hear myself use this term, but I really have to describe that news as fake news. The CTO of Goldman Sachs confirmed that the bank is currently working on the Bitcoin derivative, which will be non-deliverable forward due to demand from clients. So as you can see, they're still working on it. But again, we have seen some news that were driving the price of Bitcoin down. Third factor for the whole Bitcoin dump thing is that 111,000 Bitcoins were moved to an exchange. And as you can see, this was also one of the factors that led to Bitcoin going down. So over 100 million worth of Bitcoins were moving to a crypto exchange. And right now, it's hard to tell what was the cause of this dump. Was it the fact that this article said SEC denies Bitcoin ETFs? Was it the Goldman Sachs thing? Was it the 100 million of Bitcoin moved to an exchange? Probably all three of them had a cost for that. However, the only thing that you can do as an investor is be smarter about everything. You have to know that trading cryptocurrencies is super, super, super volatile. And in times like that, people tend to get super emotional and don't know what to do because they don't have a game plan. Now, as cheesy as that sounds, 
take a piece of paper and write down your game plan. What am I going to do if Bitcoin goes below 7,000? What am I going to do if it goes below 6,000, 5,000, 4,000 and so on? What am I going to do if the ETFs get rejected? What am I going to do if the ETFs gets approved? So instead of getting caught up in your emotions like all the other guys and then panic selling, you actually have a plan, you have a written piece of paper that was written when you were not in your head um, and know exactly what to do. So you're not like, you know, you don't do, you don't um, perform a knee jerk reaction and then lose a ton of money. Instead, you have a game plan that you can focus on. And trading is not so much about um, the right chart analysis. It's a lot more, in my opinion, about the psychology behind the whole market and the psychology, how you view the market, what you do when certain events arise. And sometimes for a trader, it's the smartest thing to not get involved into the market and not do anything like i for example i open up right now a small long position on bitcoin is it something that you should do as well it's up to you however i have my have my game plan i invested um, the money that i can afford to lose i won't cry if i if that money goes to, into somebody else's hand but apparently since cryptocurrencies are a field that many young people invest in for the first time and i mean don't get me wrong i'm young myself um it's just something that many people get confused with because you know you just see a cryptocurrency you like you put your money into it in December, January, that worked perfectly well, but now it's time to get smarter about that. Trading cryptocurrencies is not a job that you do as a spare time activity. A doctor has to go through rigorous training before doing his first operation. A lawyer has to go through law school before defending the, his first client ever. And of course, Trading cryptocurrencies is not something that's as complicated maybe as, um, you know, medicine or law. However, um, you don't go to a job where you don't know the rules and you're just like, oh, hey, let me just start trading. And that's a mistake many people do. So before you decide to go and become a full-time crypto trader, please do your homework. Going on now to the news section. If you take a look at Yahoo Finance, you'll see you have S&P, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, crude oil, gold, gold, and stuff like that. And then if we go a little bit further, we'll see that Bitcoin and the US dollar pairing is there as well. Something that was completely unimaginable a few years ago. And I really like that. Going on, we're talking about the ETF a, a long time. And um, the decision of the SEC on the VanEck and SolidX ETF will be done at the end of september however as you can tell coinbase apparently wants also to start a big crypto etf with wall street giant blackrock and i'm kind of confused about these etfs because on one hand i'm not a big fan of them i'm not a big fan of giving away the power um to institutional investors of our precious bitcoin and second of all the market is so volatile and so prone to manipulation as we have seen why should the etf uh, be approved of the sec Anyway, the CBOE also wants to launch a Ethereum future. So they already launched back in December, had their Bitcoin future. And now they also want to launch a Ethereum future. Now, Australia working on their first blockchain for smart contracts, for financial smart contracts. And you have to know, guys, that so many billions of dollars, euros, you, you name it, are being lost every day in transaction costs and inefficiencies in the whole economy uh, that smart contracts are an amazing amazing opportunity to revolutionize the way we work with each other and seeing australia work on an official blockchain in on an official smart contract system is to me a great confirmation that we're in the right path the blockchain is on the right path the blockchain is becoming more and more legit Plus, of course, I think that after Australia did this, uh, will do this, I think that a lot more governments will as well make their own smart contracts. Deutsche Börse set up a dedicated blockchain and crypto asset unit with 24 person team led by Jen Jens Hachmeister to coordinate its blockchain based activities across uh, across the group and that's fantastic because we need a lot of regulations for cryptocurrencies and that's a process that takes a long time and it's just amazing for me to see it. <laughs> 24 people. Wow. 
So US Senate confirms new pro crypto SEC commissioner Eled Roisman. And this might be a good sign for everybody who is into, who thinks that the ETF is a good idea. And he's a pro crypto guy. He's from the Republicans. And um, yeah, this might be a good thing for the ETF. Furthermore, more news from Germany. Dominic Schiena, the one of the founders of um, IOTA, is going to speak at the Wirtschaftsgipfel in in Germany. How is Wirtschaftsgipfel called in English? Basically, it's, you know, a big deal. So Angela Merkel will be there, uh, the leader of Germany, the president of Germany, and a lot of uh, important CEOs from the whole industry and Again, one more thing that was completely unimaginable a few years ago that IOTA will be there. Furthermore, Bitcoin Cash did a stress test and they completed 2 million transactions in 24 hours, which is, of course, amazing and a lot better than the comparison between Bitcoin. Um, but however, Bitcoin Cash has a higher block size than Bitcoin. And if you have a traffic problem, is it always the smartest idea to just keep up um increasing the road size they're increasing the lanes i'm not so sure about that i'm not a big fan however a great achievement to be able to do uh, to perform two million transactions per day fantastic to hear that that's possible going on as always at the end of every video if you comment on my video with your litecoin address you have the chance of winning some litecoin and I hope that I won't pick a spam comment with an annoying airdrop. Uh, Anthony Q, great video. Thank you so much for commenting, Anthony, and thank you so much for providing me with your Litecoin address. A lot of people comment and forget their Litecoin address. So there you go. You get $2 in Litecoin. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up and comment down below. Really appreciate that and helps my channel. And keep in mind that everything in this video is my personal opinion and not financial advice. So take care, have a great weekend, and until next time, bye-bye.